please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Trading Hour. The market is up 22 or points or so, which means it's actually been a, a, a strong recovery from the day's lowest point. And this after a bit of a scare, actually, I must say, which, uh, I mean, you saw, you see that dip down like the way it did. Uh, and, uh, you know, the first reaction is, well, my God, this is going to keep going. The rupee looked pretty uh, vulnerable. It got past 72 to a dollar. Uh, and all of that is reversed. I mean, I think, uh, you know, the fates of both the rupee and the uh, nifty and the market essentially are uh, intertwined. Uh, so 30 pesos recovery on the rupee and the stock market recovering quite a bit from the day's lowest point uh, at this point in time. So that's basically uh, what we've get, what we've got. Uh, I was a little puzzled looking at that big dip right in the morning. Uh, so it didn't uh, come as a big surprise that we did recover. Uh, but you know, uh, good that it did because uh, it was looking like it could go either way and it could uh, become a one-way trending kind of a market. We'll get your opinion from our uh, technicians, uh, fundamental uh, sort of market guests in just a bit. But uh, for now, uh, that's what we have, a big recovery from the low point of the day. Ekta morning. Hi, uh, Prashant. Absolutely. And everyone's talking actually about the Asian market weakness mm -hmm. that we're seeing today. If you look at us on a week-to-date basis, in fact, we've actually done better than Asia. So MSCI Asia X Japan on a week-to-date basis at current reckoning is down around 4 odd percent. And look at the Nifty, which is down around 1 odd percent. And the mid-cap index has underperformed, but still better than what we've done as a whole compared um, in terms of the Asian region. So the mid-cap index down around 2.2 percent. A lot of stocks in focus to discuss today. So we will be talking about the likes of Sun Pharmaceuticals. That stock is down and out after the Halol plant received six observations. Aurobindo, which is seeing a follow-on buying today as well. So 800 rupees almost for that particular stock. And Bajaj Auto, which is also in focus. So that stock should come up for you. And Reliance Naval, which is a bit sluggish at this point, down 3.4%. But let's get talking about the technicals of the market. We have Mitesh Thakkar joining in for that. Mitesh, over to you then. What would you be recommending this Friday in terms of the nifty as well as specific stocks well to me i think the index looks range bound and the way i've looked at the counters is possibly 11 580 600 on the upside to about 11 400 on the downside and i think we might just be choppy within this range i think we've had one level of more one choppy move already with the morning uh, seeing some kind of decline and then we've seen mild recovery up post that and uh, on the stock specific side, uh, I have uh, two buy calls. Torrent Power, I think, has got into some kind of an uptrend. That's a buy with a stop at 265 for targets of 286. And ICICI Bank has recovered from very strong zone, support zones of 322 to about 325. So now it can be bought with a stop at 328 for targets of 346. How's Axis looking, uh, Mitesh? Morning. Uh, Prashant, disclaimer here that I personally hold this stock uh, in my future trading position. I think the long-term charts are excellent. I think uh, it's after a rally, it's just going through a consolidation. So 620 to about 650 could be the range in the near term. But I think eventually the stock should break uh, on the upside. And I'm looking at targets in excess of 725 to about 750 over here. So very good if you have about six to eight weeks kind of a positional view there. Okay, well, we have a couple of uh, Twitter queries then. Krish is... Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, no cr Twitter queries, uh, Mitesh, for you today. We're going to wrap it up then on a, that note. Thanks very much for joining in and talking to us. Krish, in fact, is the next person who's joining in to tell us what he's recommending in terms of strategy. So let's go ahead and get him in. Uh, Krish, over to you then, stocks as well as index. Yeah, hi, Ekta. Yeah, we are seeing some sort of a bounce uh, from uh, the crack that we have seen over the week. Uh, but again, I think it's just uh, some sort of a bounce which might uh, take the index up a little more. But uh, beyond that, uh, looks uh, we, might, we could see the, the resumption of the downtrend. So keeping um, all that in mind, I think um, one could, we are recommending buying or uh, doing a bear spread in Bank Nifty. Uh, that is uh, one could possibly buy 27,300 strike put and sell a 27,000 strike put. So net cost comes to about 100. The maximum that would, one would make is for 200 bips. Uh, so recommending a stop loss of uh, 50. And stock specific, uh, again, a couple of bears between Axis Bank and uh, Tata Seed. To begin with, uh, in Axis Bank, uh, I think 650, 660 could be uh, near term resistance levels. And we could see some more uh, downside. So one could possibly buy a 640 strike put and sell a 600 strike put. The net cost comes to about 14. The maximum gains will be about uh, 26 rupees. And stop loss recommended is 7. 
the last one is the best friend again in tata steel though the metals have been pretty choppy but uh, uh, i mean they have been the ones which have risen the last in this uh, this in the massive rally that we have seen so odds are high that uh, they could weaken also i mean going ahead so one could take into a bear spread in tata steel buy a 600 strike put sell a 560 strike put the net cost comes about 13 uh, the maximum one would gain is 27 rupees and uh, recommend a stop loss of 7 Okay. All right, Krish. We're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's the view coming in in terms of a couple of more strategies. But let's uh, discuss specific stocks now. Sun Pharmaceuticals is one stock which is under pressure. This is because the company's Halol unit has received six observations from the US FDA and the details of those observations are out in public as well. Uh, Cinderella Carvello of Kotak Securities joins in on the phone line to discuss this. Cinderella, over to you then. Uh, what's your recommendation? after seeing the halol observations how serious do you think they are uh, hi uh, i i really like you know i've gone through the observations and i even i have looked at uh, uh, taken our experts opinions on it and uh, i feel that you know they are on a minor side and largely on the procedural ways so uh, basically i don't think uh, it is going to be uh, heading to any adverse ways so we should not be looking at it uh, and i feel again it will be for more and more approvals which we expect at least from the halol to flow through in the coming times so you don't expect any sort of delay in approvals if not a worst case scenario of an oai etc no no i at least don't i'm not looking at such scenario at at this present moment at least looking at the entire uh, entire form 43 and taking the opinion Okay, so you're not expecting a delay in approvals from uh, Halol, but um, what exactly are you assuming from the Halol plant in this fiscal FY19 as well as an FY20 when you're talking about, say, product approvals as well as an EPS estimate of contribution? So, uh, see, in terms of approvals, I feel at least three or four good approvals apart from the Spark approvals that are lined up. So that's my expectation. And good approvals are in something upwards of $250 million above is our estimate that we are looking forward to. Uh, there are certain injectables also which we are waiting. So likewise, and of course, uh, earnings-wise also, as, as the halo was cleared, we have been positive on this name. And we feel uh, not just the uh, earnings will stabilize with Halol, but the uh, patented pipeline, as that will start uh, flowing into the earnings from FY20 onwards, the earnings growth will shift to a next leg. So, you know, there are a lot of things that we need to wait and watch. Uh, the patented uh, uh, basket, which is coming with sequa, aluminia and everything on stream. And as and when that gradually becomes, starts contributing, uh, the scenario will totally shift to a different leg of growth. So we wait and watch for all these legs to move up. And uh, Halol, from a perspective of stabilizing the earnings, uh, and uh, the additional growth will come from the patented basket. Okay. Uh, I want your thoughts, uh, Cinderella, on Aurobindo and the move that we've seen there. Uh, so, yes, of course, the uh, acquisition has um, taken Norovindo to the second biggest prescription clear uh, once that uh, entire acquisition gets consumed. So, yes, it's, it's a one good thing. I think the stock was highly undervalued for a long time. And with this uh, kind of uh, uh, entire acquisition scenario, it has come to a good level now. I think uh, it's... It, it's kind of, uh, you know, uh, this is the price where we were expecting the stock to be. And that's where it has reached now. So we are fairly okay, but we'll wait for the acquisitions to come, you know. My only uh, thing what I want to understand in detail is on the side of the pet side and the how many products, approvals that we can get, how many NDAs. Because all those details would be available only when the uh, uh, acquisition is completed. So I'll wait for that. But yes, of course, it is a positive move. And uh, of course, it makes the company the second biggest prescription wise player in the U.S. So it's a decent acquisition and it has come at a decent price also. At least looking at the so price, the it doesn't debt, look... The fact that they are getting debt of around a billion dollars doesn't concern you as of now or you it want does, more details? It does. 
it does it does concern but i think if uh, entire pipeline pans out everything goes in well then it is uh, in control but if anything any piece moves here via then it will be something uh, you know too difficult to manage because you know uh, so carrying a debt of this level is definitely not comforting uh, for anybody uh-huh. but i hope i'm hopeful that the pipeline will support this kind of moves and the growth aspiration moved in the right direction sure. only if things move in the right direction okay all right cinderella we're going to leave it okay. on that note thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us so that's the view coming in from kotak securities both on aurobindo as well as sun pharmaceuticals we need to take a break now but up next we'll be talking about the commodity and currency space manisha gupta will be joining in vandana hari will be with us as well the mid cap index there is an outperformance which is taking place so up around 7 tenths of a percent bank nifty is down so a bit sluggish uh, there but overall for the nifty also just about holding above 11550 as we speak but let's get talking about the crude and uh, commodity space we have manisha gupta joining in to tell us what she's tracking there manisha a bit of respite from crude oh, well absolutely you know we headed for a weekly decline this time around for crude last week was 80 dollars a barrel almost there but this week we've seen constant declines uh, for most part of the week the us weekly data also has been on the mixed side on one uh, side you had the oil inventories at uh, the lowest since feb 2015 but on the other side if you look at the gasoline inventories those have been rising and that's weighing on while there are a lot of contradicting fundamentals right now looking at crude oil it really is about the macro picture that this sector also would want to watch out for so the weekly jobless uh, data that came in from us uh, is near 49 year lows and that is something that the markets are looking at but uh it is about the trade uh, global trade concerns which really seem to be heating up right now with china saying that they will retaliate if us comes out with any more list or any more uh tariffs being slapped on them also now us trump uh, the, the president trump is now seen uh challenging uh the japan on trade issues as well it also has to do with the us non farm payroll data that's due to come in the evening today so there's plenty to watch out for before we head into a weekend and that would continue to keep the markets jittery but the crude oil prices and let's talk to, uh, more about that with vandana hari of vanda insights and she joins us on a phone line now vandana hi good to have you uh, you know how much are you watching the demand and supply numbers right now vis-a-vis the global trade tensions or the macro uh, really that really seems to be impacting many commodities including crude hi good morning manisha uh, that is exactly what the market participants are now trying to do uh, to see how much is the supply extra supply that coming out of opec non opec so that has the news on that front has been quite reassuring for the market this week hmm. uh, opec non opec opec and russian production rose further in august compared with july that's uh, what we've seen from the initial surveys by news agencies when it comes to demand though that's where i think it's uh, much more problematic because right now what we're seeing in terms of crude futures is uh, you know in the market moving just on the basis of a gut feeling you know whenever you have a bad headline uh, that suggests a further escalation in the trade in the tariffs war um as i just mentioned now perhaps us japan tensions coming to the fore as well mm-hmm. and aside from that uh, as i'm sure you've been discussing over the past few days generally uh, there seems to be a mood of pessimism uh, caution if not pessimism over emerging market economies globally we've seen uh, currencies being battered we've seen uh, the msci emerging market stock index has uh, is is in bear, bear territory so, so uh, you know that, that's oil, exactly yeah that's exactly what i'm saying one that has the tension shifted from demand supply to uh, you know what's happening in ems and uh, and and you know, the bigger macro picture the trade tensions really so if you say right now today that indeed seems to have happened in fact this week we are heading for a lower close hmm. uh, after the higher close uh, for for two successive weeks and that's precisely because attention has shifted back but um i think i'd like to underline here that uh, you know do not assume that now that is the the way going forward because what we have uh, started i think is a seesaw battle we going to uh, have one because iran fears are there you know they are not going to go away and that's weighing on the supply side so you're going to have this 
um, you know, the, the demand concerns and the supply worries perhaps taking turns to have to take a hold uh, over market sentiment. Mm. Well, then I also come in on the report which OPEC came out saying that 100 million barrels of a global demand is a level that they see to breach quite soon. Uh, how, how much attention would you give to that number right now? It's, um, you know, probably would not cause the kind of ripples that it would have, let's say, up to the first half of this year. Uh, now, if you look at the projections from OPEC, uh, the e US EIA, or the International Energy Agency, they are all, they have so far been maintaining their outlook for a robust demand growth globally uh, this year. Okay. But uh, I think the market has started discounting that a fair bit. And But again, as I, as I alluded to earlier, the problem is going to be to try and put a figure to, if, it, if it's not going to be that robust, what is it going to be? Okay. Uh, that's going to be difficult. Hmm. One final question. And how much of a currency impact do you actually see coming in for the crude oil prices? So, um, or dollar has been strengthening quite a bit uh, the past several weeks. So there's another uh, Fed rate hike expected, I think, this month and possibly mm. another one in December. But in terms of uh, further appreciation of the dollar, uh, you know, from what I understand, uh, the Forex market specialists are not looking for a much more appreciation going on from here. <laughs> All right, point taken, Vandana. We'll let you go at that. Thank you so much for joining us. So, well, of course, this week is headed into the negative, as Vandana says, do not uh, read too much into it because many of the fundamentals are still supportive of higher prices going forward. Manisha, thanks very much uh, for that. So, uh, I mean, a few days uh, won't make a trend, and uh, that's not good news uh, for a big importer like India. <coughs> Uh, that's been a big problem for the currency and everything else here as well. For now, nine points on the Nifty. Uh, again, it's uh, going a little down and, uh, you know, it's not selling off the way it did right at open. But it's a steep cut from the t uh, from uh, over the last, what, 20 minutes or so. Since the time, actually, that we started the show, uh, that was pretty much the high point of the day. We take a very quick break here. We come back and uh, we discuss market technicals. Ashwini Gujral, as always, will be with us. Uh, we get you some more opinion. Okay, the market's coming off now. Seven points odd left. Uh, the bank nifty is down about a third of a percent. Uh, and uh, I'm sure Ashwini will have a word or two about uh, what we're seeing once again uh, in terms of a sell-off. But we'll get to Ashwini in just a bit. Uh, let's uh, listen in, uh, to the shopper stop management. Global tech giants are eyeing a slice of, the India's, uh, slice of India's retail market. Uh, Rajiv Suri, who is the managing director at shopper stop, says the company is uh, not in talks with any foreign player at present uh, for a stake sale, etc. Priya said my colleague, caught up with uh, Rajiv Suri. Here's a piece of that conversation. We believe that uh, our guidance, we like to stick with our guidance for around 7, 7.5% growth, and then we'll have to see how we react. Uh, at Shoppers, we've, we've been sort of leaning towards less discounting, uh, and we're going to see how much pressure we can take on that. Uh, now that uh, you've, it's been some time since you've taken over in terms of store expansion, uh, what's been planned? Have there been any changes that you've decided on ground to implement? So I think that uh, what is really important is that uh, we continue our strategy. Our strategy has been to open between four to five stores uh, in the market. Uh, we are currently in 38 cities. End of this year, we'll probably be at 41 cities. We want to push the envelope a bit more on uh, beauty. And we think that the beauty space is somewhere where there is higher growth potential, uh, especially in uh, color and skin. And as the Indian women are starting to pay, spend more money on that. Uh, and uh, so that's where we are going to focus on. You know, as we speak, there's a lot of buzz in the retail industry. It looks like it's the second innings of the retail space. Lots of foreign players are approaching homegrown domestic retailers to expand their offline footprint. And at Chopper Stop, you already have a very strong uh, footprint uh, in the country. Have you been approached by any players, barring Amazon, of course, uh, any foreign players at this point? So at the moment, we are not in talks with any other players. And we are keeping our focus on our strategy in terms of expansion and in terms of growth. What about Amazon? Uh, Amazon has uh, picked up about 5% in Shopper Stop. Uh, what's the status with that investment? So we have a uh, investment, uh, Amazon investment down uh, about 5% of our company. Um, this gives us a couple of strategic advantages. Uh, one is the, we are now on the front page of the fashion. We have a microsite, so that gives us more visibility on uh, Amazon. Uh, secondly, we are, we are trying to see how we can bring the Amazon experience into shoppers. We've opened three kiosks now in uh, three stores. 
and the uh, results have been positive. We are going to start to accelerate that growth. So I am hoping by the end of the year we will have 12 of these kiosks. And uh, there are other discussions we are having on how to integrate better. So for the time being, these are the two places which we are sort of working together on. Any conversations on slightly or marginally increasing stake in Shopper Stop with Amazon? There is no discussion on any change in that. Okay, so that's the management of Shopper Stop. There is a CFO change which has taken place at HCL Tech where Prateek Agarwal is now going to be the new CFO, um, effective 1st of October. And the current CFO, Anil Chanana, who's actually been one of the faces of the company, is um, uh, going to be replaced by Prateek Agarwal. So we'll try and get you more details on that and uh, put the news into context as well. Ashwini Gujral is here with us to discuss the technicals of the market then. Ashwini, over to you for the Nifty. What are you recommending this Friday? Uh, we're a little choppy in a tight range and the mid-cap index which is outperforming but that too has given up gains. See my sense is that uh, our macros are kind of cooling off and uh, even globally uh, you know from the lows there's been a bit of rally. So what I'm betting on is that uh, use today's low as a stop. The market is loaded with shorts and any more cooling off of uh, macros or the, the global markets recovering for some reason, trade wars, cooling off, etc. You could have a fairly strong rally, and strong rally from the lows uh, would be a fairly decent move. So my sense is that uh, I want to buy into the bank Nifty right now, use the day's low as a stop, just because it's fairly oversold and we are now not getting uh, the kind of follow through that we were getting. Uh, earlier today's big large first bar had no follow through so the market uh, look is looking like a bit tired on the downside uh, in the immediate term and you know any sort of rupee recovery uh, will help out now, having said that uh, rvl bank is a buy with a stop of 590 target of 615 icici bank is a buy with a stop of 328 target of 341 and uh, bharat forge is a buy with a stop of 670, target of 695. Mm -hmm. Ashwini, uh, I mean, you know, uh, the, you said the market seems to be a little tied on the uh, downside, but you you could uh, use the exact same uh, sort of reasoning on the other side as well, right? I mean, which is the fact that even barely any bounds yesterday, and already uh, this bounds that we saw from the day's low is being sold into. I mean, so this is. Uh, just purely on the charts, not a, not a sign of a market which wants to bounce, is it? See, what happens is that just on the first low, markets never bounce. How will the bears lose confidence if they see that, you know, we are not making new lows? They'll try once, twice, thrice, and then finally, you know, you've been having a downtrend. Nobody can say that this market is greatly long now. A lot of, you know, weak longs are out. And the situation is, you know, basically macros. Mm. So the moment EM start to recover a bit, they've had a bad week. So at some point, you know, things will recover a little bit, where shorts will cover well, where people will take the other side. I mean, look at the conversation. Uh, rupee is, you know, all-time low, everything all-time low, sell, sell, sell. So it's in, in the, these situations that you have to watch for price action. Is the price making fresh lows? And I don't think that is happening. So it's worth taking a 100-point risk and uh, see if you can get some upside. 